What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overlord here. We're going to be talking about Dune Part 2 in this video here today. This will be a spoiler free review for Dune Part 2, which is directed by Denis Villeneuve, who co-wrote the screenplay along with John Spites or, or Spates. It is starring Timothy Chalamet, Zendaya, Rebecca Ferguson, Josh Brolin, Austin Butler, Florence Pugh, Dave Bautista, Christopher Walken, and several others. Now, this film, of course, is the follow-up to the last movie that came out back in 2021. I think this one's supposed to come out last year until the strikes intervene. But anyway, this film is revolving around Paul... And Paul Atreides, who's continuing his journey united with Shani and the Fremen as he seeks revenge against the conspirators who destroyed his family and endeavors to prevent a terrible future that only he can predict. Now, after a streak of turds, minus Mean Girls, because you know I've been dropping bad review after bad review, I am happy to say that Dune Part 2 is one of the most amazing, superb, breathtaking, gripping, visually stunning films ever made. It's now the best film I've seen this year, and that's likely not going to change. I revisited the last one at least two times in the past six months just to prepare for this film, and I will say this is a near-perfect sequel that is able to surpass the original in almost every way possible. After tragedy struck their family in the last one, Paul Atreides and his mother, Lady Jessica, set out to do two things, inform everyone on Arrakis that Paul is the Messiah and to get revenge against those who have wronged them. Now, I will say that the weakest aspect of this screenplay still comes down to giving me little to root for when it comes to our characters. Not that I'm not on Team Paul, but he is kept interesting thanks to his significant presence as a prophesized Messiah. Shani, his friend and love interest, is intriguing just for being his love interest. And then a lot of other key figures like the Emperor, the Emperor's daughter, who I believe was named Erulan, uh, Fade Ratha Harkonnen, and other newcomers newcomers who only have legs to stand on thanks to strong direction that gives gives them meaning and purpose when they are on screen outside of that these characters aren't very interesting and if something happens to any of them i won't really care as much as i would like to case in point one death towards the end of the film didn't get a single reaction out of me and sort of fell flat because the story didn't do enough with said character prior to their demise the saving grace for everyone involved in terms of being a character comes down to this tension that exists between the remaining Atreides, Harkonnens, Fremens, and the other houses. War is inevitable, and that keeps the proceedings compelling even if the characters are more than a little thin. While Paul lacks the depth that I think he should have as a protagonist, his determination, strength, and resilient traits are enough to keep me invested in his journey. I'd say Dune Part 2 screenplay is at its strongest when exploring themes of religion, political power, and suffering through its characters, more specifically when it focuses on the friction that exists between the Fremen and Paul when one half believes he's the chosen one and another half are not convinced. Those moments of the story are thought-provoking. It also excels at finding a suitable balance for all the moving parts to the narrative, Lady Jessica spends most of the film spreading the gospel, if you will. Paul is with Stilgar, Shanti, and the Fremen trying to earn their acceptance and respect. Elsewhere, we are reintroduced to our villains that we met in the last movie, along with newcomers with Austin Butler's fade Ratha Harkonnen stealing the show. With so many characters, it can become very quick for a story to be bloated, overcrowded, and I'm happy to say that Doom Part 2 never feels like any of those previously mentioned words. The dialogue feels natural and realistic, which helps make Paul and Shanti's romance relatable, as well as keeping other major events impactful. Because a lot of times in these movies these days, you get this dialogue that really takes you out of the experience. And I don't have any of that when I'm watching Dune 2. As mentioned, the new villainous Harkonnen, Fade Ratha, is a great newcomer in regards to his usage and the menacing presence he brings when on screen. The story is constantly highlighting Paul's fighting abilities and Fade's abilities, keeping us as the viewer eager for the obvious setup for these two to face off. But then the fight comes, and I will say it's quite underwhelming, sadly. Still... How the story keeps you on edge in anticipation is nothing short of brilliant. Hans Zimmer's score remains godly and powerful, filling every other frame with intensity, joy, urgency, sadness, or whatever emotion is attempting to be conveyed at the time on your screen. Zimmer's masterful work makes Doom Part 2 epic and amplifies the stakes of this sci-fi story. Denis Villeneuve's direction is impeccable, especially when considering how Timothy Chalamet 
becomes this more than convincing chosen one that just oozes with nothing but confidence towards the end of the film, commanding your attention at almost every turn when addressing his congregation. Zendaya impressed me, and of course Rebecca Ferguson can do no wrong, but I'd like to point the finger back at Austin once again. Austin Butler was more than terrifying or was more terrifying than any horror film, any new horror film that I've watched this year. His demeanor, facial expressions, and the makeup just made Faye Rotha a force to be reckoned with. And Austin Butler deserves all the attention he gets for the work he put into this role, which again is a testament to how strongly directed this film is. Um, Vilnev, he nailed those action sequences. In comparison to the first film, this movie just is again raising the stakes. I definitely see what people mean when they say there's big, they, it has an overall bigger scope to it. Everything is just bigger, especially these action sequences, which are filled with intensity, suspense, tension, and he's really capable of just creating an atmosphere that is very immersive, easy to get connected to everything that's happening, even again, if the characters are thin, like I mentioned, the character works, I still think needs to be worked on in that third film that we inevitably are going to get because i think they're a little too thin but despite all of that because he's such a phenomenal director the overall experience is able to still keep you engaged because of the performances the overall nature of it being suspenseful very tension based and the lump in my throat that i just had while watching this movie it's like the weight of the world i felt that on my shoulders while watching the movie from start to finish i've never watched a movie this year so far besides this that just made me feel so emotional at every turn there genuinely was a few times where i was watching it that tears were starting to build in my eyes because i was just so impressed at how tremendous this movie is it's a well-crafted technically sound movie it is phenomenal in every way shape or form from a technical perspective i have to give it its props there the pacing was fine i didn't think the movie dragged by any means uh the runtime seemingly flew by so it had solid pacing i would say all in all dune part two is better than the last one I would have to give this movie a solid 9 out of 10. If I'm being quite honest, it is that damn good. Like I said before, the, strong, the weakest aspect just comes down to the character work and how I really just think they need to work on giving me a little bit more to grasp onto as to why I should be rooting for these people. They all have likable qualities to them outside of our villains, of course, but you get me. Let me know what you guys think about all of this down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you subscribe, turn on post notification, and there's a video in the description. I have links on my social media accounts. I am on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there to let me know any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.